today, RX 8000 GPUs get a release date. AMD's monster APU is big, the entire lineup of next-gen X3D chips just leaked, and Ryzen 9000 benchmarks are insane. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that AMD's high-end RDNA 4 GPU, think the RX 8900 XTX, has basically been cancelled. At least all the rumors point to that, and it definitely looks to be the case, leaving us with what looks like more of a 500-400 series release, meaning AMD's going to be targeting the mid-range. Well, it looks like we're now getting some information on the actual release dates. As you can see right here, this story comes from Kepler on Twitter, who is a well-known leaker and is someone who's been very accurate in the past. Either way, this story started with a question about RDNA 4 being in 2024, to which Kepler stated CES. And that, of course, means CES next year because 2024 CES is long and over with. That takes place in January. But as you can see, then someone else tweeted stating having to wait for the Navi 44 until CES is sad. Well, unfortunately, he then responded and stated, oh, CES is for N48. Navi 44 is probably Q2, meaning AMD is apparently planning to launch their N48, which is set to be their higher end GPU first at CES, which of course, as of late, isn't too surprising, but then the lower end cards aren't releasing until the second half of next year. Next up, protection isn't just about not sending money to Nigerian princes. In today's world, you have to actively fight to keep your data safe. I mean, even AMD recently had their data stolen. So fight back in the best way possible with today's sponsor, Private Internet Access, the VPN I trust to keep my data safe. If you don't already know, a VPN hides your IP address and reroutes your data through an encrypted tunnel so your internet connection is secure. But I don't just love private internet access because they're any old VPN. They do things like unlock movies and TV shows you couldn't get before on major streaming services because they're blocked in your country. Like I'm now able to watch The Office. Plus, they have a no log policy so you know your data can never be stolen. But one of my favorite things is that one subscription can be used for unlimited devices. So why are you still waiting? Visit my link in the description and you'll get a whopping 83% off, bringing it down to just $2.03 a month month and four free months. Once again, that's less than a cup of coffee a day when you visit my link in the description below. And next up for today, this right here is a roadmap that leaked quite a while back regarding AMD's future APUs. And of course, since it was released, AMD has of course announced Strixpoint and it certainly made this look incredibly accurate. Well, there's one thing that hasn't been announced since this and that of course is Strix Halo. And according to this, Strix Halo was set to release on the FP11 socket. Currently, AMD is on the FP8 with regular Strix Point, and of course, that is accurate as well. But this, of course, stated that FP11 was coming for Strix Halo. Then we had this leak as well, where it sort of showed how Strix Halo was going to ultimately look. This also stating FP11. Well, it looks like all of this was accurate as we have a new shipping manifest that does in fact confirm that these are going to be based on the FP11 socket, but it actually gives us one thing further. It gives us the dimensions of the socket itself. And as you can see right here, this is 37.5 by 45 millimeters, which makes for a total size of 1687 millimeters squared, making this one chunky APU. It's actually identical to the LGA 1700 socket that obviously was found in Alder Lake and Raptor Lake CPUs. Now, that may not sound all that big, but don't forget that this is set to come to notebooks. To give you an idea of just how big it really is, as they state down here, the currently used FB8 package, which is what the latest Phoenix APUs came in, measures at 25 by 40 millimeters, so the FP11 package is a whopping 60% larger. Basically, this is one giant APU, but it very much is understandable. Don't forget that this bad boy has been rumored to come with a whopping 
40 CUs, and that's just with the GPU. The actual CPU portion also comes with 16 Zen 5 CPU cores. So we're talking a 16 core APU with an absolute monster RDNA 3.5 base integrated GPU. Not only that, but the biggest model comes with 256 bit memory, which likely does mean at least for the highest end model that it won't be coming to desktop, but there is a lower end model with, I believe, 20 CUs that is apparently said to be a 120 28-bit bus, which could potentially work for desktop. All in all though, this APU is one monster chip. And speaking of monsters, AMD's next-gen gaming CPUs, specifically their desktop X3D chips, are coming and coming fast. Don't forget that the most recent leaks claimed that they were actually going to be releasing very soon. And I actually have a little bit of an update on that, but I'll get to that in just a second. In the meantime, the entire product lineup just leaked. As you can see right down here, originally from WCCF Tech, they claim that while the information is a bit early, based on what they've learned, AMD's Ryzen 9000 X3D CPUs are likely going to include three SKUs, similar to the existing lineup. In fact, it's going to be very similar because, as you can see right here, they include the 9800X3D, 9900X3D, and 9950X3D. And when we actually get to looking at the specs of these, you'll notice that the amount of cache in each of them is the same as last gen. Basically, while there are certainly some updates coming, like AMD said, I'll get to that once again in just a second, the actual amount of cache that's going to be included with these remains the same. So if this is right, the 9950X3D will still only have one chiplet with 3D vCache with the other one being regular Zen 5. And of course, that isn't too, too surprising. I was a little bit excited for the potential of it, but obviously with the fact that you still have to have cross CCX communication and that does cause latency, I don't really know how much having both of them with 3D vCache would really help, at least without like a complete overhaul of the Windows scheduler, or something along those lines to try and limit that cross CCX communication. Still, Still, it is really good news because likely what was being discussed as far as this generation's X3D chips being different from last gen is the fact that from what we've seen, it will include overclocking. So obviously that is a big plus compared to last gen, not to mention the fact that it's Zen 5 and I have no doubt that that's going to give it a big boost as well. Still, this is good news, especially when we talk release, because as you can see right down here, it says the 9000X3D Zen 5 desktop CPUs with 3D vCache are expected to drop by late Q3 or early Q4. Meaning if you're a gamer and you're really pumped about getting the next gen X3D chips, you're not going to have to wait nearly as long as you did last gen. Oh, and really quickly, I forgot to actually mention, I obviously said the name, said that they're the same 3D V caches last gen. Now they do say that the names aren't finalized, but I'd of course be really surprised if this wasn't the final names. Regardless, apparently everything pretty much for the most part is going to be staying the same. Not a big surprise there. The 9950X3D is a 16 core CPU, 9900X3D is 12 cores, and 9800X3D is of course an 8 core CPU. And lastly for today, we're finally starting to see some performance numbers for AMD's next gen Ryzen 9000 chips. And let's just say I'm seriously impressed. This is some really awesome stuff. Starting things off, as you can see right here, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X. That is, of course, more of a mid to high end part that's not the absolute best. That is their 12 core CPU. And what's wild is that it actually beats basically everything. This right here is a Geekbench 6 benchmark. And as you can see, it got a single core score of 3401, which, as they state, tops the Geekbench single core ranking, at least when it comes to desktop CPUs. Moving down to the multi-core score, you can see it got 19,756. Now, what's wild about this is that when we compare it to their last gen, as well as the 14,900K, once again, seriously impressive. As you can see, the 9900X completely crushes even the 14,900K at single threaded score, and it actually gets extremely close to it in multi-threaded score. In fact, this 12 core CPU beats out AMD's last gen 16 core CPU in 
multi-threading. So yeah, this is no slouch of a launch at all. And that actually isn't all. Once again, I was just going to be showing this here, 12 core, 24 thread CPU, but also that's not all because according to WCCF Tech, this right here is actual benchmarks that they received that was done on an X670E motherboard using a retail 9900X chip. And wow, <laughs> is it really, really impressive. Starting things off, you can see the 9900X at 120 watts beats last gen 7900x at 170 watts meaning at 30 percent less wattage it actually ends up beating it by a whopping 13 percent but at the same wattage it ends up beating it by 18 percent oh and i guess i should have stated these are cinebench r23 scores this is multi-threading now i will say that it does lose here to the 14700k but that's at its absolute maximum power draw here we are talking 253 watts so at 170 watts it's really not even comparable and according to wccf tech it actually should end up be getting by the time it releases over 35,000. basically amd's next gen ryzen 9000 chips are no joke and their upcoming x3d chips especially if they release really soon is set to be really exciting as well so while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to protect yourself with private internet access for less than a cup of coffee a month down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.